can do whatever you like and it's probably going to turn out absolutely fine. Hello and welcome to the Artist Opus tutorial. We are going for our Horus Heresy basing scheme in this one. So do hang around if you want some tips on how to use GW's texture paints particularly well, because there's definitely some ways to get the most out of them. And then we're gonna do a quick kind of, I guess you'd say like Mars basing scheme, which is a real favorite of mine because it works so well with so many different colors. Um, you know, you could have this basing, or well, I've got it on. I've got it on five models to my left now. It looks great on all of them. Uh, you could have it on lots of models and then have them look great facing each other on the same table. Or if you want a display cabinet or a diorama or you and your mate often play each other, something like that. I love it when armies have the same basing scheme on different armies. I think it looks brilliant. Anyway, um, it's really simple. There's a bunch of tips and tricks in here and it's approachable by anyone. And getting the most out of GW's textures paints, uh, texture paints, is really easy once you know a few things. Like they're better when they're thicker, for example. So uh, yeah. Let's jump in. Okay guys, so let's take a little look at some dried bases. So I think it's actually most useful to look at these once they're done rather than while we're doing them. We'll make one in a second, but let's examine some stuff. For me, the best looking bases we've got here are these three to the left. They're varied, they've got some big sections, they've got some small sections. They've also got some nice flat places that feet could fit in nicely. Always want to consider that because if you don't settle as nicely on these and you will make better bases if you can make your minis off your base. You don't have to, but it's my preference. And I think people should do it. It lets you do a far better job way quicker, like way, 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 way quicker. Even if you have to scrape some stuff off and stick a guy down in the gap, um, you're still gonna save time. This one is really cool in the middle, but it looks like I've just made a circle of stuff and left it around the edge. Now, I try to not have my stuff collect towards the edge. There's a really good reason for that. If you're gonna pick these minis up and you've got flakes on the edge, they're gonna get pulled off. So rather than doing it and then trying to protect it, I just avoid it full stop. So my stuff kind of peters out towards the edges. Um, but what you wanna do is have it look random and it just so happens that there is barely any stuff towards the edge. Not there's this great big blob of crazy stuff and then there's a suspiciously smooth bit around the edge. Now you can break this up with tufts and stuff, which is like camouflage, put some water on, you know, I'd put my tuft here here, one in the middle, you know, something here or a skill there or something, and that's gonna break up that outline. So rather than looking like a circle, you're gonna jump into it here and there and break it up. That's a brilliant way to do it, but I'd rather not have these be a thing. So I'll show you now how I do a base. Okay, here's our technical paint. These are better when they are partially dried. So I go as far as even when I get them, just leaving them with the lid up for a bit. It doesn't have to be all the way up. Keep an eye on it, obviously, but they are far, far more helpful when they're thicker. You'll get thicker stuff in the lid. You can make use of that. Okay, so we've got our base. Big scoop. Use an old brush that you don't love. You can clear the brushes and clean them up really easily at the end. Like this stuff comes off well, but that's only if you're willing to be thorough. So if you're not, just use a brush that you don't have. Um, in its best condition. This one's years old. I'm gonna take some of the thick stuff from the lid. It's a lot thick, you can feel it. If you get any chunks, that's not a bad thing. They can end up forming rocks. That's actually just a chunk. So you blob it down, work fairly fast, but they don't dry too quick, so you've got a fair bit of drying time. And then what I try and do is make sure you go all the way to the edge, but not too thick. You don't want a little, it's very easy to end up with a rim like this. That's not a good thing. You're gonna end up with delicate stuff that gets cracked off. Especially if we're talking for gaming minis, guys, it's just not gonna last. You're gonna end up with a sad looking army after you've taken it to, um, to do just a couple of games. Finish up, run a finger around, and then we're gonna play around in the middle. So if you stipple in, you'll get a more random pattern and it'll be more general. That's gonna look very, very even, which is its own look. If you want a big drift, However, which I often do, then you can build it up. Specifically in one location. Like that. You can absolutely hair dry this stuff. Uh, I've played with texture paint a lot. For, for, you know, for my money, I don't think there's any negative side effects to speeding it up.
So partway through the drying process, we can see that we've got some flat sections there. There's an obvious point, you know, bear in mind what minis you are basing, but we could have a space marine foot here and a space marine foot here. That'll work out really well. And then we end up with a piece of interest at the front of the mini and at the back of the mini uh, in a convenient place, which is really worth considering. Okay, so we are literally exactly two minutes into that process with a hairdryer and we've pretty much got all of this dry uh, when it's all turned the same color. Uh, no bits dark and other that's when it is dry, apart from the big chunk. You just gotta be patient with that or speed it up with a hairdryer, something like that. It will look great. The larger and thicker the rise, so the longer that it takes to dry, um, the bigger the cracks that you're gonna get between things. So if you want some stuff that looks like like here or there, you know, like really extreme stuff, then you've got to put it down thick. And that's why you can't use the fresh runny stuff quite as easily. So let it thicken up. The other thing you can do is take some, spread it out on some cardboard, let it partially dry and the moisture be sucked out, and then take it from there and scoop it onto your bases and you'll have a much more viscous liquid, which is really helpful. So we're just gonna leave this one off to the side to do its thing and dry out, but we're gonna slap some paint down on these. Number one tip, maybe number two after, use your paint thick, um, is I'm gonna varnish these. Like these are going on a gaming table. They're gonna be picked up, they're gonna be touched. Now, of course, if you're picking up your miniature by the head or whatever, then you're not gonna to touch the bases readily, but stuff like this will get knocked. And that is super dry, brittle, and flaky. You're gonna fix that. There's a really easy way to do it. We're just gonna give it two quick coats of spray varnish. I'm using GW's monitor and varnish. You can use whatever you like, but that's gonna make it absolutely indestructible. Just there we go, you can see how shiny it is. We just need to let that dry for a bit and then we're good to go and they're gonna be completely bomb-proof um, in comparison to massively brittle and you know a liability and something that if we put washes on, will just collapse. And anything that stops us from using washes on, I'm not interested, <laughs> period. They're one of the best things in painting. Okay, so we're all dry. So it's up to you how um, how much of the black you want to drop in, if any, you can drop in a purple, put anything you like in there. I'm okay with it being like this. And basing, I think one of the general rule of thumbs that I go for the most is that you can be really unsubtle. You can make loads of mistakes. It just won't matter. The ground's random, so you can do whatever you like, and it's probably going to turn out absolutely fine. Now, as with the base coating, I'm going to make sure that my dry brush goes right over the edge. I'm just using Scrag Brown here. And this is a pretty patient, kind of consistent coat here. This is probably the stage the entire thing that's going to take the longest. You just want to make sure that you've laid a really good foundation for what's to come. Okay, so the next step is death claw. Anything that looks unsubtle in the background, the moment you put less subtle stuff in the highlighting steps in the foreground, you kind of push it back into a unnoticeable territory. So all those dark patches, um, you can either use less than numb oil in the shading the gap stage, or you can just kind of roll with it and let them gently fade out as you pull more attention to the steps that we're about to do. So death call one is super quick. The lighter we go, the faster it's gonna be and the easier stuff's gonna get picked up and then we'll just rock straight in. Notice that I'm not cleaning my brush between steps. I've got a little bit of the previous color in here and that's really gonna heavily affect the kind of the transitioning. So with a little bit of the previous color in, whatever I do is gonna look a bit more subtle. So you see, I just mix some of the Screaming Skull in and the more I mix it in my brush, the more it goes to the orange of the previous step. Take out all those details right to the edge. 
And then what I will do is for the final step, we'll give the brush a little bit of a clean. We'll still work it into the brush, but we'll do something that ends up much brighter. I'm using a medium here, by the way. And it's up to you how much you want to push this final step. I quite like the depth that it adds. You can go as subtle or not as you wish. If you want to see a difference between the two, that's not pushing it too far. And that's pushing it that little bit further. So pretty much buffing by the end steps. There we go. I think that natural variation looks great. We're just going to break it up with a couple of tufts. We'll be done. Victory lap time first. You can use whatever black you like. Um, I'd pick the one that, yes, whatever black you like. I don't think that there's another okay color for base rims, but obviously that's my personal preference. Um, it's more about the finish of the black, I feel. So if you want a satin, then go for a bad one like I'm using. If you want a super matte, then pick something from another brand. I just use the side of a brush that's not too big. Again, this is something that's just miles easier if there's not a model on the base. You'll get a nice crisp line, and because we didn't take those thick sections to the edge, you're not going to get any chunks, you know, kind of overhanging the edge, making your life more difficult. So I'm going to do that twice, and we'll end up with a super crisp satin rim to finish it off. Okay, so getting the most out of tufts couple of things here. Take your tuft, pick off any stragglers from the edge. There's normally quite a lot of these. They look unnatural, um, the ones that are about to fall off. And the other thing is, if you want to back it up to a rock or whatever, just chop your tuft in half. Put it down, sneak a blade in from the side, and then just press down the hard. Two tufts, really good for backing up to rocks. Ours though, as we've got a, uh, a blank base without a guy on it, I'm just gonna pick areas that I would like to break up. So anywhere that I think looks unsubtle, there we go. Break up the profile of that one. And I'll do the same on the other one, and we're done. Skull would of course look amazing, but that is it, Mars basing. Alright, we're done. Turned out super well. Shouldn't be a surprise because I've done that basing scheme a lot. There is a load of stuff you can vary in this. You can vary how much of the black you dump in to get a more subtle or less subtle effect um, in the deep cracked areas. You can use the paint super thick, you can use it super thin, you can drop rocks on top of it and have them as a contrasting colour. Uh, a cool grey works really well um, and the dust will show up particularly well on it. So you can use it thick or thin. Uh, you could put a contrasting rock colour in there or a same coloured rock colour there and just have, you know, some, some physical big chunks and it gives you somewhere to put your tufts around. We do love tufts. Um, so yeah, play around with it. Skulls look brilliant on it, of course, uh, but the nice thing about skulls is you get an excuse for a very pale bone colour and then you can wash your base into the eye sockets and stuff like that so it looks super natural. Um, with my skulls, I like taking them and then sanding off the bottom so they sit at like a more natural looking angle or um, poking them into the texture paint. If you do, dot some super glue around them or some PVA because otherwise they'll crack it off. Again, the varnish step over the, um, over the texture paint when it's been done, I cannot say enough how important that is. Making your models durable is a really important thing to me. I've got one over here that I converted and half the reason it took so long is because I wanted to be able to use different wings on it and have it you know, not unbelievably delicate. People find it really worrying when I do that. It's indestructible by this model's standards anyway. So yeah, durability is an important thing for me, especially for gaming armies. Thank you very much for tuning in. If this is the first video of ours that you've tuned into, please like, please comment, please subscribe. Check out our other content. We've put this basing scheme across four or five or six now, uh, Horus Heresy uh, Space Marines, and it looks great on all of them. So you can see some evidence there that it really is a truly versatile basing scheme. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next video.